Did you know that hidden away in the central bank of the Philippines, since 1986, lies a collection of treasures that have sparked international intrigue and debate? These jewels, once flaunted by Imelda Marcos, the enigmatic and extravagant First Lady, are more than mere adornments. They are symbols of a dramatic and influential period in history. Despite numerous attempts to auction them, these priceless items remain in limbo, guarded and unseen by the public. Join me as we explore Imelda's stunning collection, from royal tiaras to rare gemstones, and uncover the stories that make these pieces both mesmerizing and contentious. What should ultimately become of these dazzling jewels? Let's find out together. Before we begin, please support my channel by clicking on the like and subscribe buttons. Thank you. The story of Imelda Marcos, the former First Lady of the Philippines, is as fascinating as it is contentious. During the decades of her husband Ferdinand Marcos's rule, their extravagant spending led the country into debt and poverty. Imelda was born in 1929 into the prominent Romualdez political dynasty of the Philippines. However, a series of misfortunes altered her life. Her mother died of pneumonia when Imelda was just eight years old, and her father faced financial ruin, forcing the family to move from Manila to her father's hometown, Leyte. Despite the lack of resources, Imelda compensated with her beauty, which became her valuable social asset. Physically, she was always perfect, says Lauren Greenfield, a documentarian who made the film The Kingmaker. From a young age, Imelda participated in beauty pageants, first in Leyte and then in Manila, where in 1953 the mayor named her the city's muse. Imelda's brief beauty queen career included participating in the Miss Manila pageant in 1953. Although she qualified for the Miss Philippines contest, another contestant won the title. Imelda initially worked in a music store and later at the Central Bank. In 1954, she met politician and future president Ferdinand Marcos. After just 11 days of courtship, they married. Imelda became a popular figure during her husband's election campaign. Because she often wore butterfly sleeves and had a decisive demeanor, she earned the nickname Iron Butterfly. From her youth to her old age, she consistently wore butterfly sleeves. In her youth, she was a walking fashion icon, named the world's most elegant woman by Time magazine. She attended many important events, always maintaining her looks, figure, and poise. As First Lady, she gained access to immense wealth, which she showcased through her wardrobe, real estate, and of course, her dazzling jewelry collection. She famously said, As the First Lady, one must dress beautifully to set an example for women. She lived a luxurious life, but was also generous to the poor, funding the construction of hospitals for the underprivileged, cultural centers, children's hospitals, and the country's first light rail transit system. Imelda's passion for jewelry was evident from the start, and during Ferdinand Marcos's 21-year rule, her collection grew exponentially. She acquired a wide range of jewels, from rare gemstones to custom-made pieces by renowned jewelers from around the world. These jewels were confiscated from the Marcos family when they fled the country in 1986. They are divided into three collections based on where they were found. The Hawaiian collection was seized from their luggage by customs officers upon arrival in Hawaii and is under the jurisdiction of the Presidential Commission on Good Government, PCGG, the Malacanang Collection was confiscated from the Malacanang Presidential Palace and is under the jurisdiction of the Office of the President. The Rumeliotes Collection was seized from Dimitrio Rumeliotes, who attempted to smuggle them out of the country for the Marcos family and is under the control of the Bureau of Customs. For the past 38 years, all three collections have been stored in the Central Bank of the Philippines. Reports on the number of items in each collection vary, but the most reliable data indicate approximately 300 items in the Hawaiian collection, 400 in the Malacanang collection, and 60 in the Rumeliotes collection. Despite being the smallest, the Rumeliotes collection is often considered the most valuable of all. 
In 2015 to 2016, the government enlisted appraisers from Christie's and Sotheby's to evaluate the jewels with the intention of auctioning them before the end of President Benigno Aquino III's term. This move was made considering that Ferdinand Marcos Jr. was running for vice president and would likely try to halt the sale or reclaim the jewels for the family, which continued to litigate for their return. The Presidential Commission on Good Government also considered exhibiting the jewels publicly before the auction to remind people of the Marcos regime's corruption. Although neither the exhibition nor the auction took place, the appraisal allowed a better view of some of the jewels, as a complete inventory or photographs of most pieces had not been made available to the public. I invite you to explore a part of Imelda Marcos's extensive jewelry collection that came to light thanks to the 2015 to 2016 appraisal. Although Imelda Marcos was never photographed wearing a tiara, her collection includes at least five different tiaras, among which are significant historical pieces. Foremost is the pearl tiara known as the Russian Beauty. The tiara has royal origins and an exact replica is housed in the Kremlin Armory. The Russian beauty diadem holds a romantic story connected to Emperor Nicholas I and his wife, Empress Alexandra Fyodorovna. Their love story began when the 17-year-old Grand Duke Nicholas Pavlovich first saw the German Princess Charlotte. Captivated by her youthful charm and beauty, he fell deeply in love. Unlike many dynastic marriages of the time, theirs blossomed into a true love story. As a symbol of their heartfelt union, Nicholas I commissioned the exquisite Russian beauty diadem. Created in 1841 by the talented jeweler Carl Eduard Bolin, this diadem was crafted from platinum, diamonds, and adorned with 25 large pearls. The pearls, resembling drops of sea foam, added an ethereal beauty to the headpiece, gently swaying with every movement. After the revolution, the tiara was confiscated and put up for sale multiple times. Among its owners was Duchess Gladys Spencer Churchill, wife of the 9th Duke of Marlborough. At some point, Imelda Marcos acquired the tiara. The pearl and diamond tiara by Catchpole and Williams has been identified by jewelry enthusiasts as the Beaumont tiara, originally belonging to Baroness Beaumont. The tiara is highly versatile. It can be easily transformed into a necklace, and the central element is detachable, allowing it to be worn as a brooch. It seems the tiara was never worn with pearls before. It is quite likely that Imelda added the pearls when the tiara came into her possession. The Cartier tiara resembles the style of one that belonged to Queen Elizabeth of Belgium. It also strikingly resembles the Belle Epoque diamond tiara worn by Elizabeth Drexel Lair, with open scrollwork of small leaves and wreaths, and a central diamond, which was gifted to her by Kaiser Wilhelm II. Another tiara in Imelda Marcos's collection is the antique cabochon ruby, diamond, and maybe pearl tiara in silver, topped in gold. There is also the brilliant baguette and oval-cut diamond coronet in white gold, with a comb. Its origins are also shrouded in mystery, but I wouldn't be surprised if it were discovered in the future that this piece holds a long, fascinating history. Imelda repeatedly showed interest in royal jewels. Did you know, for instance, that she also owned the impressive Emperor Maximilian diamond ring. This 39.5 carat ring was purchased by Marcos in 1983, three years before her husband was ousted from power by a popular uprising. Originally, the stone was bought by Archduke Maximilian in 1860, shortly before he was proclaimed Emperor of Mexico. However, when he was captured and court-martialed by opposition forces, Legend has it that Maximilian wore the diamond in a small pouch tied around his neck when he was executed, said Christie's. The ring was not confiscated. Imelda managed to sell it. In 2010, it appeared at auction listed by an anonymous collector. Besides exquisite tiaras, Imelda Marcos's jewels include many other intriguing pieces. For example, among the jewels seized in Hawaii, there was an old 25-carat briolette-cut diamond. It has a distinct pink color. Pink diamonds are extremely rare. According to Christie's, in 250 years of auction history, only three pure, vivid pink diamonds over 10 carats have ever been sold. 
A large cushion-cut pink diamond was sold for $28.55 million at Christie's semi-annual jewelry auction in Geneva in November 2015. Imelda Marcos apparently had a penchant for diamond necklaces featuring Indian stones, including Burmese rubies and Colombian emeralds. Let's look at some of her necklaces. Imelda's collection features several impressive emerald necklaces. For instance, a gorgeous 35-carat sea green emerald and diamond necklace, or an emerald and diamond bib-type necklace. There is also an emerald and diamond opera-length necklace, where each stone is meticulously matched. This pendant features a large emerald. There are also numerous ruby necklaces, a ruby necklace with diamonds and a gold setting. Here is a ruby necklace with diamonds by Van Cleef and Arpels, centered with a brooch featuring raw rubies surrounded by diamonds. Next, an exotic diamond necklace with ruby embellishments. A complete ruby set includes a heart-shaped cabochon ruby with a diamond surround, matching necklace, bracelet, and earrings. Additionally, there are turquoise pieces in her collection. Among Imelda's favorite pieces was a Bucciolati necklace from the renowned Italian jeweler, which she paired with yellow diamond earrings. The earrings were equally magnificent, each featuring heart-shaped yellow diamonds weighing 5 carats and barrel-shaped diamonds of 10 carats each. The Bucciolati necklace, adorned with 93 carats of diamonds, is a stunning yellow gold choker with a central yellow pendant diamond of nearly 15 carats, complemented by smaller yellow diamonds and rose-cut diamonds. This Persian-style necklace contains about 100 carats of yellow canary and pinkish diamonds of various shapes, sizes, and cuts. However, the most impressive piece, in my opinion, is her antique Ceylon sapphire and diamond necklace, mounted in silver and gold, reportedly made in 1880. These stunning large sapphires are truly captivating. You can also see many other necklaces. And this is just a small part of the collection of the former First Lady of the Philippines. Imelda Marcos's collection included numerous dazzling brooches, including a large gray pearl surrounded by clear diamonds. There is also a pendant brooch with a 10-carat canary yellow diamond and South Sea pearl. Other notable brooches include a diamond and natural pearls brooch, a floral diamond and ruby brooch, a sophisticated diamond brooch, A large cabochon ruby oval and diamond brooch mounted in yellow gold. A lucky themed emerald and diamond brooch. A brooch with a 20 carat emerald cabochon, a 2 carat ruby cabochon, and diamonds set in white gold. A diamond and blue sapphire bow brooch with 7 carats of sapphires and a total of 46.5 carats of diamonds giving it a royal appearance. A large pearl brooch or pendant surrounded by diamonds, rubies, sapphires, and emeralds in a bow, set into yellow gold. Next, I will show you some of the earrings from Imelda's collection. There are also fascinating pieces here. Van Cleef and Arpel's emerald earrings are a true highlight of Imelda's Rumeliotes collection. Each emerald, of exceptionally rare clarity, color, and quality, weighs three carats, while the diamond droplets are three carats each. Here is another pair of emerald earrings surrounded by diamonds. Additionally, you can see a faceted emerald drop, diamonds and pearl brooch and earrings set in white gold. Imelda also loved to showcase elegant ruby and diamond earrings and rings. Next, we have a set of cultured pearl and diamond ear clips, 
brooch, and ring in yellow gold. Here is an unusual set consisting of a black star sapphire and diamond brooch, ring, and earrings in white gold. Let's talk a bit about bracelets and other sets. Imelda Marcos bought so much jewelry that many pieces remained unused. Among them is a 30.76 carat diamond bangle bracelet that is part of the Rumeliotes collection. It was found in its original box with the price tag still on, marked at $1 million in 1986. One of the smaller trinkets from the Rumeliotes collection is a bracelet with 10 carats of rubies and diamonds, 5 carats each. The rubies, described as pigeon blood color, are surrounded by smaller rubies and diamonds set in yellow gold. It measures 1.5 inches in width and 8 inches in length, marked by Van Cleef and Arpels. Another bracelet features a series of large, diamond-shaped central gemstones, each set in a geometric rhomboid setting. There is also an antique diamond, sapphire, and ruby bracelet with a matching pendant, and earrings mounted in silver and gold, circa 1860. But what future ultimately awaits this collection? Numerous lawsuits and appeals have yet to determine who owns the jewels and what should be done with them. The government claims that the jewels were purchased with money stolen from the Filipino people, but Imelda Marcos denies these accusations. Besides the legal battles, the issue with selling the jewels lies in the inability of the three government entities controlling them to agree on how the proceeds from the sale should be used. In the past, they have sold other items, such as at Christie's auction in 1991, where old master paintings and silver were sold for $20.3 million, most of which went to the Presidential Commission on Good Government. The latest news regarding Imelda's confiscated jewelry collection that I found dates back a few years. It states that President Rodrigo Duterte approved the sale of Imelda's jewels, though the auction date has not been announced yet. It's hard to believe, but the auction date still has not been set. If the jewels ever do go to auction, it will likely become one of the most expensive collections ever sold. These treasures, once symbols of immense power and wealth, now stand as reminders of a complex and tumultuous history. Personally, I believe that such a collection should be used to benefit the Filipino people, either through auctioning to fund public projects or by displaying them in a museum to educate future generations about this significant period in the country's history. What do you think should be done with these jewels? Should they be auctioned, displayed, or something else? Please share your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching and exploring this fascinating collection with me. If you enjoyed this video, please like, subscribe, and share. Thank you.